Welcome all to another Mac Trains episode and another interview with Simon Kohler, known to one and all across our hobby. You may also notice lurking in the corner a certain young fellow called Chris from Peachy TT120. So we thought we'd get him along here today. He's been kind enough to invite me a few times onto his channel for the Let's Talk TT episodes. In fact, we've just finished recording our second episode for that. It'll be launching probably before this one goes out. Keep an eye out for it on this channel. So I thought it was only fair to invite Chris along here to Mac Trains to show him how to do things properly for once. Right then, a warm welcome to you both. Our intention today is really to check in with Simon and get his slightly belated reaction um, because I was away and other things got in the way to the range launch for Hornby's TT120 uh, earlier this month, uh, the 2nd of April. So thank you very much, gentlemen, both of you for being here. We greatly appreciate your time. If you want to just give a quick hello to everyone as we get going. Go on, Simon, you go first. Oh, no. <laughs> that was one of the pauses, was it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hi. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to you all. Um, good to be um, talking to Greg and, of course, to Peachy, who I have subscribed to his channel for um, some uh, considerable time now. So, yeah, it's good to see you all. Excellent. And hello to everyone. Uh, thank you for that, Simon, for that endorsement. Uh, I did checks in the post. Uh, <laughs> um, so, I'm, so my channel is PGTT120. Uh, as with Greg's, uh, what we aim to do is a, <clears throat> a very positive, as much as possible, reflection uh, on our hobby and on this new scale. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, if we start, Simon, with just a general reaction, you've had plenty of time to reflect and ponder. What do you think of the 2024 range launch? I think it was a good, successful launch overall. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's still in line with um what i what i left behind when i when i moved away from hornby um yeah it's fine i mean it, it's what can i say it's perhaps not moving as fast as i would like it to but then again i was always impatient and um as one or two people pointed out perhaps i was rather optimistic over um getting product out there yeah no um I've, I've always you know been very positive uh, uh about the tt scale in itself and i've always felt that you know you have to have something coming out all the time um so yeah it's 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 very good it's positive you'll obviously you know when you get new people uh into a company they're they're looking at things differently uh, um, but yeah, it seems to be progressing in the in the right direction. Yeah, very pleased. Love love to see the thirty seven. I want to see, you know, if I was sitting opposite Cole now, I'd be saying, well, when are we going to get it? You know, you know, let's not mess about. But we yeah, did, we, did, we we did ask him. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, the, but there's always a process, uh, and looking from where they are now. Probably a good year away, but it looks really good. And I'm pleased that they're sort of um, allowing for different variations, much as they've done with the with the 66. Yeah, um, I think that's right. Uh, it's exciting to see the stuff that was launched and and get some insight into the process involved. So I think showing us the development of the 37, you know, it's a wee while away, allows us to to anticipate and see what's coming up any particular highlights for yourself simon from the range launch well no not really it, it um because obviously i knew what, what it was going to be or what i thought it would be yeah. um but um i have to say um and i, I i'm going to blow my own trumpet the hst is a success mm. uh it's 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 a, a uh, a range of models that will be in in the TT range for hopefully ever in a day. Numerous liveries. Um, I suppose I was slightly surprised. It's not a criticism, just slightly surprised that um, the set 
uh, doesn't feature a different livery from what's already available as a solo. But again, you know, people have different ways of looking at things. Um, but no, I, must it's... Admit, I must admit, Simon, I was distraught when I found out the LNER version wasn't coming out. Um, but uh, I've got over it now. <laughs> yeah. I, I said mean, I, I to you, it, it from a from a from my perspective, you know, a, a different livery. Uh, but as I, as I say, people have different ways of looking at it because it, it would mean, you know, um, more coaches of LNER, uh, and you have to you have to um, what's the word? Uh, have to control stock. Mm -hmm. You see, so. You don't have a whole warehouse full of Mark III coaches of all different liveries. You know, they've got, what, three now. Um, yeah. Let those work through and then uh, introduce uh, another livery, I would imagine. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah it, but as I say, there's plenty to have a go at. There's plenty there for the future. And I think um, HSTs will be in the rain forever and a day. Absolutely, uh, and it's it's something to look forward to, isn't it? Yeah, it would, absolutely. It would... And I think I think this is this is what's exciting for me about TT is that because you know if you look at what's happening in the world of Double O, you know it seems virtually every week there's new product being announced and all the rest of it. Whereas with TT, um, people who are into TT, they're not being bamboozled, they're not being showered. That, oh, do I need that? Or should I save that? Or whatever. It's coming through. And what comes through is eagerly awaited. Mm -hmm. There'll always be those who say, there's not enough GWR, you are, you know, a bit disappointed it's a J50. There is a logic behind the J50. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I think that's what's so nice about it. It's so clean. The other thing I, I'm really excited about is that, it sort of harks back to the double O days of the 50s and, and the 60s when you had a lot of you know, like cottage industry. Yeah. Now with 3D printing and all the rest of it, you've got lots of smaller companies, um, cottage industry in some respects, producing product for the TT market, yeah. which again is, is, is really good. It's really exciting. It's encouraging for those people you know, not not the big people. You know, the smaller people just getting into into that sort of industry, and who knows where it will will go from. But I think, yeah, I think it it's really really positive, and it's probably one in the eye for the naysayers. To be perfectly honest. Now you and, you um, dropped something in that. there because you were you were involved in it, and it's out now and it's been announced, so you can talk logic behind the J fifty. Explain to us what you mean by that. What was the thinking and thinking, right? That's the one we're going to we're going to go over a small steam. It's going to be the J50. Well, um, it was a matter of, and I've, I've, I've sort of uh, admitted I, I made the error. Um, we should have had a small steam loco at the very beginning. Uh, I put my faith in the 08, uh, thinking that we could use the 08 in a smaller set. The problem with the 08 is the same problem we have with 00. It's quite an expensive loco to produce and therefore makes it a little bit uh, difficult to put in a smaller set. Um, and I think what what happened was um, we needed, or Hornby needed, a, a steam loco. Everybody was asking. There were, there were certain things people were asking for. Um, mm. Small steam loco signals level crossing and turntable those are the ones uh, so we had to turn around uh, a steam loco fairly quickly we had um we had a couple of options uh settled on the j50 because had all the design information for a j50 so that was the logical move the other thing was it, it linked in uh, and it, i know it upset a few people but it linked in with the lner range that was already out there with the you know with the a3s a1s and, and a4 so there was a uh it, it worked and it was meant to be if you like a, a bit of a quick fix you know provide a 060 loco 
into into the TT range um, steam loco as quickly as possible. So that that was the simple logic. Okay. Um, uh, straight, it's that straightforward. Problem is. It would have been lovely, and and I'm sure somewhere along the line there will be a you know GWR pannier or whatever, and that will happen. But it's having that design information and being able to turn it around quickly. And I have to say, the at the time, uh, Hornby didn't have any design information for a pannier. Okay. Okay. I wonder, just going back to what you've been saying there. Um, <clears throat> Obviously, for the brand new range, there's always going to be gaps because yeah. you can't do everything all at once. Uh, and so I wonder, I wonder, and this will lead into a question that I think Greg was planning on asking you, which is about other manufacturers and whether or not they will see something like, for example, one of my favourite locos as a kid. I, my two favourite locos as, as a child was, was the, the Hornby um, HST. Uh, the late 70s version had that as my only new loco ever as a Christmas present uh, I nearly cried when I opened the, the, the TT120s out, I had a bit of a wetty moment uh, and then the other one was the Great Western Prairie yeah. um, it, that might have been a Lima model at the time, it might not have been a Hornby one but yeah, it, was it, my, it, yeah, it was my dad's and it was super detailed and it was the kind of thing that could pull anything you know any of those sort of like non-tendered big big steam locos, you know, I don't think they're so um, so much of an oddity. I think they're, you know, whether it's whether it's an A5 or an A8 over the LNER, or whether it's what these are called a standard or something. When it was the BR days, um, whether that's a Pacific, but without a tender, or whether it's a you know a, 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 a two six four or whatever. Those things, they could do anything anywhere. You could have, they would fit into any model rail, railway layout. You, they could be pull, pulling a whole huge chain or, or four or five Mark ones uh, or a mixed or, or a long freight of coal. They would do anything kind of loco. And I'm wondering whether that's something that um, another manufacturer might be looking at. Um, yes. Yeah, is 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 a simple answer. Um, the the as you just said, you can't do everything. Mm. The idea is, and if you if you saw how I laid it all out, you you'll see that 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 it's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle. You start off with a little bit here and a little bit there, and gradually it all comes together. Uh, and you you add in, you know, you would add in a GWR loco, but at the same time you would add in some um, rolling stock, etc., to go with it. Uh, and you fill in, you start filling in the gaps bit by bit. Um, but you have to have something cohesive. Now, the, it's quite a logical reason why the A1, the A3, and the A4 were chosen, uh, and that was because of commonality of chassis when you look at tooling. So. And it was just really a body change on, on that. And then finding the coaches that would work with it and how you could mix and match. So that was, was the logic when you're starting to put this together. When, you, when you're starting with a blank sheet of paper, um, and I always say a blank sheet of paper on a Friday afternoon when nobody's there, it, you think it's quite straightforward. It's, a, it's a literally like um, you know, an author sitting down with a blank sheet of paper how does he start? How does he start the story? How do you start with a totally new range that people aren't expecting? There's, there's, there's no perceived demand for it as a market, but you know there is one. Um, how, do you, how do you get into it? And I think you have, to, you have to go with those items that you know are the most popular in people's choices. You know, the A4s, the A3s, it says, you know, the Mallard, the Scotsman, and all the rest of it. So that that was how it works. And as I say, you you add bits and pieces. You write about the prairie. From a, a model railway point of view, a prairie is is a 
is a, is a very useful loco to have. Once you're into the hobby, what you need, you need that book to get people into the hobby. That's why you have the Mallard, the Scotsman, the HSTs. Those are the, the pools. Those are the people that, those are the models rather that drag you into it and think, oh, yeah, I want, you know, I, I want that. And I think then you fill in with the little bits, you know, <coughs> put the mortar in amongst the bricks and, and build it up, up that way. Prairie is a good one. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think it's that far away before you will see other manufacturers coming in because it hasn't gone away. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. there's, there's, um, give there's us your, give, give us your take on that. Cause I know you, I've seen you at shows. I've tried to say hello a few times. I've sort of got most crack get through the dawning crowd once. Ah. Um, <laughs> now I, we know you like to talk. Okay. And I would, I would, I couldn't believe one moment if someone told me you've never spoken to other manufacturers, uh, whether or not you're going to tell us, that's another thing. But I'm guessing you have spoken to other manufacturers, even if it's just an off the record chat between someone that you've known for years from the show circuit. Um, I, but we're all desperate to know whether or not anyone else, other than their bean counters, who just looking at the year end figures, is anybody else actually going to be looking at this? Because um, we don't think it will be to the detriment of Hornby. We think it will be a compliment. I, um, I think, uh, and um, in in the in the days in between me um, between nineteen sorry twenty fourteen and twenty seventeen, I was talking to anybody and everybody about TT and how I was convinced there was a market there that you know it it was the right time to introduce it and the reasons why. So that's all, you know, that's all um, on public record. Um, uh, I think there, there will be, and there are people, brands looking at it. They have to be, because, you know, um, and it would just take one to put their toe in the water and, when that happens, then I think you will see it, you, it, it will start to snowball and you'll get more people into it. But it is a commitment. It is that gamble. I mean, Hornby took the gamble. Yeah. Hornby invested quite a bit of money, a lot of money, into it. And you have other companies now, you know, producing a loco is not cheap. Mm. And I have to look at, is the market there? But what I was going to say was that there are groups, and there's one particular group which I'm struggling to remember now, but every day, let's welcome these new people into the into this uh, Facebook group. There's more and more people coming in. So there is an interest there, and it's continually growing. That's what I'm saying. It's not going away. This is going to get bigger, but it's not. You know, it's not going to be shoot up like a rocket. It'll be gradual and then be a steep climb. I'm convinced. A nice 2% nice climb. <laughs> <laughs> what, what the locals... Now, just uh, speaking of, of competition and so on, and, and Chris and I spoke with a few times, but we just noticed that it, between the interview a couple of hours ago and this one, my postie arrived and I got very excited with a wee parcel arrived and I opened it to discover parts for the dishwasher and then then the then the courier delivery arrived and I, oh maybe this time and sure enough for the second time round my little acura scale tt120 oh. figures arrived um <laughs> so they have been somewhat teasing us we think with these things and getting us excited possibly for no reason or any cause but nonetheless they have at least released their research figures um which it's a very clever tease, whatever else it might be, we don't know. But uh, we would love to see, and as Chris said there, I can't see, there's, there's nobody else who would be able to do realistically what Hornby have done and say, we're going to bring out a whole, you know, a full catalogue's worth of stuff in a few years. 
But the fact that Hornby have done that, that allows, I would have thought, other manufacturers to bring in, like you say, a, a toe in the water, one thing at a time, see how it sells, and hopefully snowball and build up from there. And um, I, well, I, I think, uh, yeah, uh, I agree. I think, I think, Cal, I didn't mention Acura Scale and their figures, but, yeah. you know, the, there is obviously a reason why they've done that to see what the demand is like. Uh, and they, I would, I'm pretty certain that, that they'll be quite pleased with the reaction. So, what happens now? I mean, they've got design information on numerous items, but he's choosing that. Up. If, if I was sitting in the Acura Scale office now, there is one local I would choose um, to go with. And it wouldn't, wouldn't take Einstein to work out which one that is. But, Come on, tell um, me. Well, we're not Sorry. Einstein. You're going to have to help. We're, we're just the no, with the clock to, slowly yeah. turning and not getting anywhere. Well, let's, put it, let's put it this way: it wouldn't be out. It wouldn't be uh, out of um, uh, character for it to be running alongside the A3s and the A4s. Okay, something they already okay. have uh, design work done for, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not. They they have the information yeah. because they already have the the loco in in the double O range. But as I say, if, I, if you know, if I was to, if I was asked which one would would you do, it would be that particular one. Well, you know the one I'm we, talking. About. Yeah, I think I'm with you uh, now. We, yes. The, the, the thing is, is that quite a lot of our subscribers, and this is your fault, are new to the are new to the hobby, uh, or or returning from a long hiatus, and yeah. so. A lot of them don't actually know what a lot of those other companies do, uh, and so they, so some of this stuff is is a little bit of a uh, you know it's a, a learning process for them. So if occasionally we ask you to spoon feed us, uh, it, it's it's for our newbie audiences. And okay. for clarification, this it's also for me because Chris, you know all these all the prototype i'm useless on this stuff i love it but i'm useless in the actual detail so i need as much spoon feeding as possible and i'm happy to to hold my hands up to that and but brilliant that's that's helpful i think simon thank you for that insight just before we kind of finish off on that area of uh, hornby's launch were there any surprises or developments that you hadn't seen coming anything you think well that's a slightly different direction they've obviously picked something up there they've had 18 months or so of sales and feedback to refine their decisions is there anything that you've noticed that is a, a switch of pace or a change of direction to any extent? Well, no, not really. I mean, um, as, I, as I keep repeating myself, you have different um, people in there who will have different ideas and different thoughts, and they will um, make their own decisions. Uh, and there will be other other reasons why things have to change uh, from the original plan because uh, circumstances do change and you'll probably find and, and I did say this at the beginning you'll have certain locos that will be either brought forward or other locos that will be delayed yeah um, the, 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 the phases that I introduce uh, I know they want to pull away from that which is fair and I understand that because of its um, design time and the length of time it takes to get this product into the market but the idea of the phases was to really show the progress. And, and if, you, if you look at the phases, you can see how, what I was talking about the jigsaw, how it starts to be pulled together. Uh, yeah. And also, you know, putting a stake in the ground saying, yep, yeah, that's the loco we're going to be doing. It may not be next year or the year after, but it could be the year after that. Remembering that it takes, you know, um, a few weeks to design a loco, even more longer to start cutting the tooling, and even more getting it into the market. So, yeah, yeah. you know, you and, are looking at eighteen months, uh, or in some instances, I'm sure, be even longer. But you have to develop. You know, the thirty-seven is a great, great product, but you've all, you've got to remember that. Uh, you know, every new loco, every new TT item that comes through is a little bit of a learning curve. You know, that Hornby have been making double O models since 1937. So they've learned a few things, they've learned a few wobblies, but they still drop 
the odd brick, which everybody does. We all do. Uh, and, you know, I'll put my hand up and I've dropped a few bricks as well. But you're looking at TT, which is totally different. Obviously, in scale, it's reduced down. Tolerances are different. You have to learn all these things that you take for granted with double O. So um, developing will take that little bit longer, which is probably why the J50 took, you know, that little bit longer than uh, I had in, anticipated. Yeah, so um, it's, uh, in our interview with Carl, he, he mentioned the fact that, uh, just to, to highlight one of your points, was that the, the issues they've been having with the, the, the 50 foot um, LMS uh, brake, the passenger brake or, or, or um, yeah. you know, uh, it's, I think it's more of a, um, like a postal thing, isn't it? Or, you know. But anyway, the, um, because the axles are wider, because they're more true to scale, yeah. they've got a problem that they never had with double O. The double O's bogies were narrower, so they had more clearance. Yeah. And so this has been another learning program of a problem for them. Uh, and, 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 and interesting, what you said about, you know, you've been in the business a long time. Lots of other people who are running their companies have also been in the business a long time. So they, they, they all know, you all know, all the, the manufacturers of, of, of model railways, they know that these things take X amount of time. And so when you came out with your, and you know, Hornby had been, Three years with the with the behind the first announcement, doing all your development stuff and doing all your design studies and stuff. Um, so when you came out and you turned around and you said, "Here's what's coming out straight away, and here's our idea of phases of what we could be producing in the future," I still find it bizarre that Hellion threw the baby out with the bathwater. That Hellion turned around and went, "Oh, um, you're doing that, so we won't do it. So we're going to back off." And then, of course, everyone had jumped on on social media saying they're typical Hornby bullies bullying another company out. Of, well, and, and I, I didn't buy that for one minute. Um, my, my own personal opinion is that Hellion had got so much backlash from their double O people because it was horrendous on, on, on social media telling them that they're making a mistake and don't go down the same route as Hornby. That they went, well, it's, not, it's a wind of opportunity. Simon Cove has turned around that that maybe in seven years' time they might produce this logo. So that's an excuse for us to buck out. And that's my only my own opinion. It's not being informed by anybody else. Well, I mean, the only person who or people who can answer um, why they backed out is Hellion himself. Yeah. All I would say is that if um, what they were showing were um, the uh, 3D printed uh, class 31 and I've spent all that time designing it uh, add to a point where I can print out a 3D because from there you then send the design off to get the tooling if I'd got that far knowing full well that you know looking at it Hornby won't produce anything for three years I don't think I would have stopped I would have carried on because I knew I could get it out before so uh, as I say the only people can answer the reasons why they pulled out is really hell yeah uh, uh, and, and you know and that's all that's all I can really say on the matter but as I say if it had been if it had been me and I was that close knowing that the opposition that was far away I probably would have just carried on and got it out. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, this isn't this isn't me beating on Hellion. Uh, I uh, think if they, if they if they change their mind and come back, I'd buy one. But you know, yeah, simple, simple yeah. I'd say it's, you know, if if you take it at face value, um, as I say, they they have that three D printed model. Um, they've they've obviously done all the design work in two T. Then why stop? You know, you can press the button now and get it out uh, within a year. Uh, and that, quite frankly, is going to be a year or so ahead of, of Hornby if they carried on with it. But, you know, we know what, we, you know, the, the done 37, what's next? Because uh, I'd probably go, if I've done the 37, I'd probably look at another steamer. 
you mentioned earlier, Simon, that uh, you're delighted with the HSTs coming out. That was something obviously in development in your own time there. It doesn't get to the stage that now other in that time frame otherwise. Um, they've had, I think, excellent reviews. I haven't got one, but I know Chris has. Um, I'm probably saying Chris has one is probably a bit of an understatement, I suspect, but Chris tends not to buy things in ones these days. Um, so... <laughs> The wife will watch this. Where's, where's the wife? <laughs> <laughs> um, but your own um, excitement, involvement with the, the HSTs, it seemed to be, like a, I felt, it was a step up in many ways from the original stuff that was released. The weight of it, the five pole motor, a heavy chassis, um, the lightings package involved. Was that something that was, that was envisaged quite early on for the HSTs? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Really from day one. I mean, originally going way back. Um, the idea, um, was, you know, how do, how do you how do you introduce a, a new scale? The idea was um, to do like a part work, and the model to use for a part work was going to be an HST. So in each each issue, you know, at the start you've got a drive unit, and then. The next thing you got some track, and the next thing you got a coach, and the next, and and that's how it was going to introduce TT into the market. It was an idea, it was a thought, uh, which got put to one side. But the the model that that you know using the HST um, for so many um, levels um, that um, it had to be part of. The you know the Hornby range fairly early on because as I say it ticks so many boxes and crosses so many decades. So, but it's um, yeah producing a model with the lighting, with the five pole motor, with the pulling power because with TT you can now run because of the size you can run a full scale train which is 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 really really exciting. Um, I don't know whether there's a chap called uh, Roger who's um, got his layout in the in in the lot. He started Roger. with TT, yeah, and uh, he he runs his full train. It's it's terrific. Yeah, yeah. It does look I get so excited about it. Past, it looks very good. Yeah, it does. And he he's just done a video um, where he's put a, a little uh, micro camera mm. uh, and run it. Around his layout, uh, yeah, it's terrific. It, it, you know, TT to me is just so exciting, and it it it's just growing, and it, you know the enthusiasm that people have, and you're not bamboozled, as I say, with so much stuff coming at you from all angles, and you can you can build up. You know, you don't have to have, you know, a second mortgage because you must have everything. You've got time to. Get get the money to get together, uh, etc. Um, yeah, it is terrific. It really is good. It's it's an adventure as well, you know, because it's it's it, it's it's that excitement. Um, I, I don't know how to compare it. It's like having your favorite band and waiting for that next single. You know, it's that, you know, it's that the Beatles factor, if you like. Well, don't don't mention the Beatles. <laughs> oh no, don't nah. no, no, let it's say it. it's not meant to the Beatles, the fact that it opened up a different market and got more people into the hobby. For goodness sake, let's not do that. I know, no, it's, just, it's not particularly hard to understand that that was why why it's done either. It amazes me how people can miss the blindingly obvious sometimes. But yes, the, the Beatles is there. It brings people in that otherwise wouldn't. It allows a bit of a cash cow at times, no doubt, and it's useful for its own thing. So, yeah. <laughs> There's a guy in the city who, you know, he 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 collects Beatles stuff, memorabilia, and all the rest of it. And he and he, it started him building a model railway, yeah. you know. Uh, and but that's not like it's, it's it's the same reason, you know, the Coca Cola sets. The same reason we did the Christmas sets. You know, it's not going to bring everybody into the hobby, but it it entices it it. it approaches them, you know, as I say, a different market all the time. And you have to broaden this church, excuse the term, but you have to yeah. broaden it to get yeah. people in. And yeah. again, 
comes back, I know it sounds a bit boring, but comes back to TT. You know, I don't have the space for a double O. Engage, I'm too old for it. You know, TT, I can get a decent layout in the space I have available. You know, oh, are you building a layout? Yeah. You are building you know, a layout. Me, I've got time at the minute. <laughs> uh, that's nearly as poor as excuses I haven't. I know, I know, I know. Not, I, not, I, not I acceptable. Do. I know it is. I know. Uh, it's a really, really weak excuse. But the problem uh, is, can you imagine yeah. being Simon Kohler and building a layout? I mean, everyone is going to examine that to the nth degree to pick out everything possible. No, <laughs> what he needs, what Simon, what you need to do is you need to reach out to these all these wonderful double O uh, model makers who are jumping on the TT wagon going, I'll make a TT logo, a, a layout for somebody else. Uh, and uh, just for the clicks. Then, yeah. uh, uh, but imagine, imagine the clicks they'd get if they're saying, I'm making a TT layout for Simon Kohler. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll volunteer for that job. Anybody... <laughs> <laughs> Shipping from the Outer Hebrides is prohibited. <laughs> You just had to come up on holiday and finally visit the place up here, you see. But um, yeah, no, I think right. you mentioned there um, some of the things you were talking about there. I, I recognize them from uh, your posting on Cooler Comms. Perhaps you can talk oh, about it. Up, up and running now. So just a little opportunity to to tell us what the current state of Cooler Comms is and what you're up to with that. It took a long time. To get it together because I was stubborn enough to say I'm going, you know, I'm going to do this myself. You know, I, I am of an age, you know, and I'm going to have a go. Um, as it happened, I did call upon my um, uh, son-in-law, uh, son, stepson rather, to um, give me a, a hand. Um, it still, it still needs work, um, but basically the site is part of it is. Uh, promoting what Cola Commons is all about, as in, you know, um, consultancy work and all the rest of it. But the other other part really is to give people a chance to have their say, a little bit like MRE was uh, several years ago. Um, nothing controversial, you know, just I'm, this is what I'm doing with my model or, or you know, this is, these are the experiences I've had, is to share information. But it's also given me uh, an opportunity to um, uh, put out there again some of the Simon Says that I did for, for Hornby some years ago. Um, and some of it is actually still quite relevant. It's quite interesting, actually, as I'm sort of reading it through. And there'll be more of those going online. But it also gives me uh, where I have total confidential, which is passing comment on. Um, what the world of model railways is all about or instances i think i posted one uh on starlight express last week and and the form is involved it was inspired by uh to be honest and fair um uh, something i got through from hornby about starlight express which i'm assuming is sort of um uh linking in with the new starlight express that's uh Product going to be in production, I think, uh, in June. Um, and it was just a story about that because it's one of those things that people, uh, there's a little bit of a myth wrapped around it. And I just wanted to clarify, you know, the, the, the myth was there was one layout, there, were, there wasn't actually, there were about three or four of them hanging, hanging from the ceiling of the auditorium at the Apollo Theatre. Uh, and that, you know, one poor guy had to, with a ladder, just propped up against uh, a fixed board, had to climb the height of a house and some to build a lamp or, or flip this track together. Um, Kevin Jones and, um, you know, uh, I was sort of putting that together. I was talking to Kevin uh, and he was reminiscing uh, about how some of the experiences had. So it gives me an opportunity, as I say, that sort of thing. Um, and it's 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 there for people to, to read and to contribute if they want yeah. to, really. Yeah. No, I think but just I'll... as a matter of fact, if you haven't seen Polar Comms yet, do go and look out. I think 
to um to to my own perhaps shame but also to to reiterate and um support what Simon just said there I was actually reading um one of the previous Simon says articles and I got confused I was actually looking for a different one I was reading this one and I was halfway through before I realized that, hang on this was written 10 years ago or something because yeah. a lot of it was still current and the, the sort of so the names were changed, but the basic content was still as certainly relevant, I think, to, to the industry today. So, yeah, uh, just to reiterate that, it is worth digging out. If you haven't seen them before, get yourself on to colorcoms.com. Is that right? Colorcoms.com? Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. yeah and, there, and, and just pass comments. We know that, as and has been mentioned already, you've got the, the book you're working on. Um, are we any progress for that to tell us? Um, but there is, a, there is an interest. Yeah. In it. Um, and I'm really will you be offering will you, will you be offering uh, the opportunity to, to do pre-sale ordering? Pre-sale. Well, that, yeah, I'd be just grateful for somebody to want to publish it, to be perfectly honest. Um, so um I mean you asked me about you know developing a, a model railway range. I could probably give you chapter and verse. Publishing is a different, it's a different world, it's a different animal completely. Um, I'm very grateful for the editor who's really gone through it and going through it. Well, Have you had a running bit, title for the book yet? Uh, well, it's at the moment, it's one size suits all, really. Okay. Yeah, 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 Very yeah, good, yeah. yeah, I like it. Well, without asking for too much of an insight, do you reference anything along the lines of that maybe Hornby missed out on an opportunity back in the 70s of when the, when the motor technology had changed in the 70s and 80s, and they did Hornby miss it? Did, yeah, did, did they miss a trick going into HO, which would have been supported by Backman and all of Europe, and then maybe Double O would have become uh, um, like TT, uh, as, as you know, something from the history books, and uh, and TT one twenty probably maybe didn't even ever needed to be to exist. Um, no, I think in the the seventies it was very much double O. You know, you you'd had you'd had the airfix, you'd had the main line, uh, and people and and Lima actually did try to introduce an HO. Yeah. Um, through uh, I think was it Eisenman was. Somebody like that. Anyway, um, which failed miserably because double O is so entrenched. You know, you, it, it's a bit like um, people say, oh, you should, you should be doing, you know, um, double O space, sleeper space track and things like that. Um, yeah, you could do, but is, is, is there a market there to justify all the tooling? I don't know. Um, it, uh, one day that that will happen and it will evolve. But while while the majority of track is what it is, then it won't change. Uh, and that's the same with double O. It won't change. I don't think you will. And you should never say never. I I doubt very much whether you'd ever see H O as dominant in this British outline um, as double O is. I really question that. It's just yeah. too. It is, it's it's too late. just too entrenched. It's just too late. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll be interesting, you know, with with the HO flying Scotsman, whether anybody has the nerve. But what are you going to run with it? You know, um, yeah. you can't. This 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 was the whole premise over TT one twenty. An um, American, an American caboose. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's going to be. <laughs> It would be a, a little bit like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you, uh, I can imagine, you know, you, you'll see the Art Merklin um, flying Scotsman running around an American layout, you know, um, but uh, no, it, and, you know, the flying Scotsman is very popular in Germany as a local, so it will go well there. And there'll be a few people who model uh, Merklin over here, who will buy it, I'm sure. But, yeah. it, you know, HO. It's niche, isn't it? It yeah, is. It's... But it, 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 
boils all down, you know, as I've said before, to, to motor sizes of the day when you were hooked in. That's I think the closest thing. as well to double O. TT can come in because there's a clear distinction. And hmm. HO, whilst it gives you that fidelity of scale or closer to it than double O, it doesn't offer you the benefit, it doesn't offer you any more track on the same side, eight by four board or whatever it might be. You know, it's exactly the same. So you're you're actually not gaining, you're not able to make the, the case for it so clearly, I don't think, as you can for TT, certainly not today. I think TT no. is a very, a very coherent brand that you can put across. Here are the advantages. No song from place double O, but if this is what you're looking for, do it in TT. Um, and and that would be really a difficult sell in, in HO, I think. Yes. Yeah. You're right. It's, it's, as I say, come back to it. Double O is too entrenched. And as you say, HO is not, not enough difference. Yeah. Really. One last question, Simon. We have a wide YouTube community covering model railways. Some take a different slant. Some choose to be less positive. What's your take on that? Um, well, I think when we live, you know, in a society where, you know, free speech is important, um, we have, um, you know, we're all we all enjoy a hobby this particular hobby you know it it's a great hobby it teaches so much um um to everybody you know it from a mental health point of view it's top notch it teaches youngsters about you know so many things graphics topography um you name it from an educational point of view it's absolutely brilliant um the we do we we do seem to live in a world where it's it's very easy to to knock people um very easy to pass um comments when you that person isn't actually sitting in front of you and i only say comments some quite nasty comments um that's why when, when I have, used to have emails where people were probably having a pop at Hornby, uh, and I'd say, well, look, um, I'm going to be at Wally or whatever. You're going to be there. Why don't you come over and we'll we'll talk about it rather than ping pong all mm. this. Let's just talk about it. And, you know, nobody ever did. Mm. They never, you know, I'm not looking for an argument. I'm just, you know, I can answer the question. Don't, you know, people... That there's there's just there's no need people surmise let's put it this way people surmise and they surmise the wrong things uh and they assume uh but they don't know you know and i've always said well ask the question don't surmise ask the question but it's a lot easier for people just to have a pop hornby has always been there to have a pop at always you know right from even before social media but it's even more it seems to be more prevalent now on social media and i think it's a little bit unfair i mean none of us are perfect and the key you know everybody and, and every brand you know do do drop as i said earlier the odd brick um but then nobody does it intentionally there's always a reason to do things there's always there's a there's a reason why you know hornby for instance produced coca-cola sets and the beatles and things like that, that and the reason is to broaden the church and get people in who probably wouldn't even think about modeling railways but get into it and think you know actually this is quite good fun and i know this from personal experience that people said oh i bought a coca-cola train set well i wish i hadn't have because i've you know i've had to convert the bedroom in and it's my layout things like that I've really got into the hobby and you know it, it, it being being negative and passing negative comments isn't always helpful now do a review on a low cover mm. or or whatever and if it's if it's not right or doesn't perform properly or it stalls on points or whatever that's a fair point that's only doing what magazines do 
you know, they will review a model. And if if the chimney is the wrong shape, they'll say it's the wrong shape and, and things like that. And and that's fine. But I just think sometimes there's just so much. Um, it's 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 just it's just not helpful to the hobby to be deliberately nasty for want of a better word and 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 that's the way for my mother always said if you haven't got anything nice to say don't say anything really and i think in many respects that's it but sometimes i do think well maybe some of these articles that you see are there really just for clicks really and just to get people to get in there but and it, and it, and that's because it's monetized i think really i mean some of it's quite clever um and you know there's a, there's a site that leaves the mind where obviously the guys put a lot of effort into it but um it's not helpful you know and you only need people like um anybody you know we had this business over um and closing and then Wally, etc and you know, get, gets picked up by a newspaper and said oh you know the, the hobby's dead it doesn't do any good it's not no. it's not good balance it you can have a pot but balance it out for goodness sake that's, that's think, my my feeling that's, uh, yeah absolutely i'll hear you and, and, and agree wholeheartedly with you simon i think i think some people and this is only my assumption i think some people um can't see beyond a brand, a company, its shareholders, and what they don't, or that, or they choose not to. Or they choose to conveniently ignore the fact that if you were to go down to Margate today, actually, Hornby, in the big world of things, isn't actually that big a firm. It's a big firm in the hobby, but it's not a big blue chip. It's, and it's a got, big and, small company. Yeah, That's what the, I've always said. That. Yeah, I bet you everybody there who works there knows each other's names. And yeah. they've got wives, husbands, dependents, mortgages, food to put on the table. They've got jobs. And some of this stuff has a direct effect on some of these people's jobs, whether that's Hornby or Cura Scale or uh, any of the other manufacturers. These are all small companies. Uh, and um, I think sometimes some of these, some of these people who put mashed together some really nasty stuff don't see beyond the fact that a company may have shareholders uh, uh, which they, they do have shareholders so I say um, uh, and they just see it as a big corporate giant but none of you are big corporate giants the, 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 the small firms doing the best they can with real people working for them nobody and I, and I nobody at Hornby ever goes to Hornby think I tell you what we're really going to make a rotten low cut, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, we're deliberately not going to have uh, this motor in it, or you know, we're going to leave a wheel off or anything. Nobody, nobody does that. You know, they go there to produce a model to the highest standard they possibly can. Things do happen, you know. Things can happen in production, and people, oh, it's a QC problem or a QA problem. No. Not every model can be 100% checked. You know, they do them in batches. They check the batch, and if that's okay. But, you know, things do happen. And it's not just Hornby. It happens to every manufacturer. You can buy a Rolls Royce, it'll break down. You can buy a Range Rover, and it'll break down as soon as it moves out of the garage. You know, that's life. You know, I've... I've I mean, I won't bore you with what's happened this morning, but it's, you know, something that's less than a week old is broke, you know, and, and you think, well, that's life. No, they didn't sit there making it and think, well, it's only got a week's life. You know, these things happen and, and it just needs tempering. You know, when you pass these comments, it needs to be tempered a little bit. Because as I say, some of these things that are said are incredibly hurtful to you know to the designer who's actually spent the best part of a year putting this thing together from lots of bits of information. You know that's been his life. That's 
That's all he's been working on. And somebody comes along and glibly says it's rubbish or whatever. Terribly hurtful. Really is hurtful because he, he's not gone out or she's not gone out deliberately to produce something that is not 100%. And it's, you know, think of, think of people. Think of, you know, who you're aiming at. And yeah. and the re and and what you're saying and how it can affect them, you know. Because I I even I when I when I see criticism of Hornby, I get upset. You know, I don't I don't like to see it. I don't know quite often. It's not really necessary, no. in my opinion. And it is it is a personal opinion. Other people think, well, yeah, well, you know, I've never liked Hornby, or I've never liked Bankman, um, and they just. Just it's just a shame. It's just it is it. This hobby, this hobby is here for people to enjoy. Mm. You know, it's a pastime. You know, I and think that's probably it's why it's so incongruous in this hobby because you get this sort of thing in life. We all know this. There are people who are just bad tempered, folk who are a bit grumpy. None of us are perfect. We all have off days. We all have days we moan when we shouldn't. But I suppose this, by nature of it, it is. It is that little bit at the end of the day where you get away from, not so like yourself, Simon, who worked it day and night, but for the rest of us who use it as our hobby, it's getting away from it. It's that little half hour at the end of the day, out in the shed or whatever it might be, working on a bit of scenery, bit of track, bit of yeah. point, whatever it might be, and you just breathe and enjoy that. And so I think it's particularly incongruous in this hobby when there are those who snipe from the sidelines, I suppose. Um, but I think also... We have this new scale. We have a lot of enthusiasm for it. Um, and even when we were discussing earlier with the Hornby chaps, they were commenting that they feel the, the, the TT120 group, by its nature of being so many new folk in, there's a lot of willingness to help. There's not, a, not so much sniping and snarking within TT120, which is brilliant, because it sort of presses reset on things and everyone gets going again. Everyone's at the same level. Nobody's been doing it for long. Nobody's got decades worth of experience in this scale. Lots of people brilliantly experienced in modeling. Fantastic. I mean, Christy, as a professional model maker, can do things I can't begin to dream of. Richard at this way works with this tiny little finger she must have to be able to do the things he does. I my eyes and, won't and, focus and like hundred percent perfect eyesight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just, no, not any of these things. Yeah, um, yeah. Where's he going? <laughs> but we have a brilliant hobby. It is. It's not the most important thing in the world. I don't know why people would bother to get up so upset about it at times. But from a personal point of view, I would like to thank um, the folk at Hornby and yourself, Simon, for pushing this new scale. It's given me a renewed interest in the hobby. I know it's done the same for many people. And we trust that uh, this little uh, interview with Simon once more bringing Chris in has been useful to you all. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for uh, another interview. And do remember to check out Simon's new website at coolercoms.com. Do yeah, check. don't criticize it. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much. Not too much. <laughs> do check out Chris's YouTube channel, TT120. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Mac Trains, of course. I would encourage anyone, stick your comments. You've been watching this. You've been thinking things in your head. Get them down in the comments. I like to read them. I try to respond to anything that comes in. And I find that community aspect actually very enjoyable. So please feel free to do so. Thanks for watching. That's all for now. Every blessing to you all.